Hello, today we'll be talking about clustering and in specific the k-means algorithm. But first of all, what is clustering? Clustering refers to the general idea of grouping objects or data points together such that similar points are together and dissimilar points are in different groupings. It's actually a way of summarizing really complicated data such that you have a finite or small number of bins that you can analyze and these bins are known as clusters. So if you implement the idea that you want to group similar objects together literally, then you might get something like linkage clustering or community detection, which we'll be talking about shortly. So in these kinds of algorithms, you look for what are the most similar objects. You initially group them together in small groups, and then you grow the groups by recurring on this idea. Um, Another way of thinking about this is to take the whole data space and actually partition it. So when you partition data, you might want data points within the partition to be quite similar, but you might also want points in different partitions to be dissimilar or separated in some way, shape, or form. And so there are algorithms that also literally implement this kind of paradigm, with maybe the most famous one being the k-means algorithm which was invented way back in 1967. If you take a look at what the k-means optimization is, it's actually an optimization on the mean squared error between every data point and the centroid of the partition into which it is placed. So just to go through this, the overall optimization setup, we have a bunch of data points x consisting of x1 through xn. Then what we do is we partition those data points into k partitions, s1 through sk, such that for every partition s sub i, we compute the variance or the deviation from the mean of the points in the partition. Then we try to minimize that. How do we actually do this? This is actually an alternating optimization. First, you can initialize k-means by picking k random cluster centroids. So you can just pick k of your points to be cluster centroids. Then you can alternate the next two steps, the assignment step and the update step. In the assignment step, you go through every point in your data and you figure out which of these k centroids your point is closest to. And then you assign your data point to that centroid. So the clusters are determined by the centroids. And in the update step, you do the other way around. You look at all the points assigned to one cluster. And then you recompute their means. And now you have new centroids. And now because you have new centroids, you can go back to the assignment step. And you can assign points based on which new centroid each point is closest to. And this process alternates. If you want to see what this process looks like, there's a very nice visualization in this website that we're going to see shortly. So here we have a whole bunch of points, and I'm going to randomly choose some centroids. Let's say I choose five centroids. These centroids define partitions that look like this. So the next step would be to update the centroids. You see how each centroid moved to the center of its partition. Now I get to reassign points again and refine the partition. Then I update the centroids again and reassign points again. Update, reassign. Update, reassign. And this process will eventually converge to something where every point belongs to its centroid and updating the centroid doesn't change it. So this is a little bit of an illustration of what the algorithm looks like. So the natural question is, 
will this algorithm stop? And the answer actually is yes. And why is that? The reason is because each reassignment step lowers the mean squared errors. That's because you're assigning each point to a centroid that's closer to it than before. So this quantity is lower after each step. The same happens when you update the means. The means are actually getting closer to the points they're assigned to. So again, this expression, which is equivalent to this variance expression, is lower. So what does that mean? You have some kind of error value that keeps decreasing, 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 and decreasing until they can't decrease anymore. And so this kind of optimization goes to a local minima. So it's a greedy optimization that goes to a local minima based on the value that you give it initially. And the initialization is the part that you can choose. So you can have a random initialization to uniform points. And you can, you can add centroids that are chosen randomly. Or you can choose the partitions randomly. And so the initialization it actually determines the rest of the algorithm. And so depending on the initialization, you can get to a different solution. But in general, most solutions you get to using most reasonable initializations are going to be fairly satisfactory. So this was an example of our first clustering algorithm. We'll continue to iterate on these to see how we can improve them. In specific, you might want to think about how key means can be improved, for example, by looking instead of Euclidean distances between points, some sort of manifold distances between your points.